Good morning everybody, I'm here talking you through lesson 2 for photography whilst we're at home. Uh, so hopefully by now you should have some nice bird's eye view pictures, some still life pictures and some portrait pictures, that's on lesson 1. So here in lesson 2 we'll be looking over something similar but all different titles. So just like last week we're going to give you three titles and then you have to take photos for each one. Edit them if you can, please. So, uh, like I said last time, use Lightroom and Photoshop if you have those options. If you don't, some fantastic ones you can get on your phones, like Snapseed is my favourite. It's it's absolutely fantastic. It does everything that Photoshop does, but you know, in a different way. Now, please try and look on Pinterest to help for ideas. Uh, Pinterest has thousands if not millions of ideas. Uh, all you have to type in is, you know, bird's eye view photography and it shows you 500 ideas and then obviously you just change them a little bit. To please try again, please try again, please try again, please try again, please try multiple angles. You're not handing in one piece, you're handing in 12 or 15 photos. This is here to bulk up your portfolio, to beef up your PowerPoint, okay? So, photography terms, the first one that we're going to go over is rule of thirds. So it's a theory that an image should be imagined as divided into nine equal boxes. So you can see there those boxes, you can see that the horizontal and the vertical lines, they're all going through and you can see that, that the point of horizon is perfectly in that third box and the person is stood vertically perfectly on that third line going that way. Okay, So please keep that into account when you are taking these pictures. Here's a couple of examples here. There's one of a sunset. There's one of a light. I know that the given. I know that the given. I know that the majority of you have iPhones, so I've just put there how to turn on the grid on your phone. So obviously, go into your settings, photos and camera, and then there is an actual grid option. Uh, sorry, I haven't put it on there for every phone, but that's taking out all the iPhone users. So pause this video now and just quickly YouTube or Google how to do that if you don't know how to do that already. Thank you. Here's two examples of photos that I've taken. So you can see that my point of horizon is on the third line going horizontally. All right. I love these two pictures. They were both taken in Asia, one Indonesia and one Laos. And you can see that it just gives that really neat effect of the strict lines, the borders. It just adds to the picture. All right. So please pause this now and go off and take a few pictures of rules of thirds. I'll just remind you again how to change it on an iPhone and then please make sure that you are taking pictures of multiple subjects, multiple topics. I don't want to see the same thing over and over again, please. Okay, the second subject, <clears throat> the second subject that I want you to look at is close-ups. This is known in the photography world as macro macro photography so a close-up shot it's a photograph taken of a subject at close range which shows greater detail so you can see that that's a gorgeous photograph there of a of a match and it's just setting on fire obviously taken in the dark with a very low shutter speed it's just got a little note there about cropping obviously as well because of now, I'll show you in a photograph that's coming up, but you do need to crop these macros just to get that perfect example. Here's some really, really nice examples of fruit, sweets, daisies, leaves. All right, please have a look around your garden, have a look around your kitchen, your bedroom, everywhere, and take some macro shots. One that all students love doing is just get a big bag of sweets, jelly babies, skittles, smarties, anything that's bright and colourful and vibrant, uh, and then just get that close-up picture of it, okay? Your camera should focus in on it. I've just put there a top tip. Your camera should focus in on you, but one really basic thing for you to do is just really lightly tap that camera screen of where you want the focal point to be. Once again, the focal point is where you want the focus to be, so what you are looking at, what is the main thing. So we can see there with the, that leaf, if you aimed your camera through that leaf, then it would automatically pick up the leaf and not the person in the background. So that photographer has manipulated the focal point to be the person, so you can see the edges of the, the leaf are just slightly blurred. All right. 
Here's a couple of photographs that I've taken. You can see that I've manipulated the focal point on this bee. He's picking pollen, and you can see that I've just slightly blared the leaves of the of the plant so that the focal point is the bee. So if that was on my phone, I would have just lightly tapped the screen above the bee. And then this guitarist in Spain, you can see that obviously the hands and the microphone, everything else that was in the way, I just I kind of blared that out by just lightly looking at the man and the guitar because I wanted that to be my focal point. The photograph is based around the man playing the guitar. Everything else is irrelevant, but it adds to the kind of the vibe. So please keep that in there, but just make it a little bit softer. Okay, so... Uh, Pause this again, please. Go off. I've put there, take at least 10, 12 photos, however many you want, really. Uh, try and look up colourful things, dull things, you know, get, given the fact it's winter, get out there and grab some leaves. See what you can do. Okay, pause this, and then please take the photos and hold on to them. Okay, so last week I talked about bird's eye view. This week, I've just put on there Worm's Eye View. So Worm's Eye View is same idea, but the complete opposite. So you're looking up from the ground. So the best artist to look at, oh, sorry, photographer to look at when talking about this is Slinkachu. He does some absolutely fantastic work. He really does. It's all uh, little toys and how they're kind of living their life as little toys. He, he made a book called Little People in the Big City and it's it's really cool. So if you look up Slinkachu, you'll get some good ideas. Uh, there's some more examples. Mushroom in the garden, loads and loads of trees in a forest. Someone's obviously looked down, fr sorry, up from the floor to see this girl on the swing. And then obviously the pebbles are, are not quite in focus there for the boat, okay? And I've just put there about Slinkachu so you know how to spell it. There's a couple of my examples, so you can see that I've just got a little bit lower down on the ground for this ring. Uh, maybe not fully worm's eye view. If I was to take that photo again so that I was specifically doing it for this title, I would have laid on the floor rather than just looked up. And then that one, that building, you can see that I'm looking up, so that is actually worm's eye view. So again, just pause this PowerPoint, please. Uh, go off, take 10 or 12 pictures of worm's eye view. And then when you start this PowerPoint again, there's just this last slide here. It's got a couple of photographs on there just to uh, show you some, some cool edits that we've done in lesson over the times that I've been doing photography. So this was a student that brought in loads of glasses. And this was a girl. She actually did that as a homework project. I think she was looking through a blind there. So editing your photos, please, like I said at the beginning of this video, use Lightroom, use Photoshop, use Snapseed, Blend Photo Editor, Comica. There's so many apps out there, you probably know more than me. So please get them, start editing your photos, build up that collection from the Lesson 2 work so that when we come back, you've got Lesson 1 and Lesson 2. So already you should have a portfolio. If you did miss Lesson 1, please go back to Lesson 1 and do that. Okay, there's no rush, but please make sure that you do it because I want to talk about all of these in Lesson. Thank you.